seems a very interesting idea of what integration consists of. It mainly consists of hiding your true identity. That's the way that they perceive that people best get integrated. We end up in this society to say quite the opposite. We want people to engage in the public spaces. I believe the best representative to provide this integration is by having moderates stepping out in the public space representing these minority faiths. What I'm going to talk today about is the interest of leaders of minority faith, the actual people practicing these religions. I was going to talk about why the visualization of religion has to happen in the public space, what the practical consequences of further radicalization takes place if you implement the policy of God. First, a few points of rebuttal. So the issue that they put out here that we're actually dealing with is the aggressive attitude towards minorities. And they generally say themselves, maybe not because of minorities, it's because of economic problems, etc. So you generally think that the fact of hiding economic sim or symbols of religion, if the main fact that they are disliked is general structural problems in society and economic problems, those structures will still exist. They will still be able to direct hate towards these minorities. You're not counteracting the actual fact of why they're disliked. Because you think these people will still be different, even if you take them out of the public space. But by taking them out and forcing them out, you're legitimating the idea that they're not legitimate actors who be part of the public space. So generally they said they have a rise of right-wing groups. We believe they probably exist to the same degree. The worst is that they would be even worse and more extreme. Why would that be? Because as he says in his earlier speech, religious leaders are local leaders, so everybody will listen and not go out. We do not necessarily agree with that characterization, that everybody belonging to a minority faith would no longer go out. We believe some would not go out, probably the moderates. What we do believe is that the radical representatives of those faiths would still go out in the public spaces, because they are the ones who feel so absolutely strongly about that religious belief, that they probably not stop just because somebody told them that. They would probably say, I'm here to fulfill my faith, and some leader over there has a dodgy interpretation of what text says. We believe those people will go out in the public space. And if you fear right-wing extremists and an unfair representation of what these minorities are, you're just spurring them and you'll make that problem get even worse on your side of the house. But we also said, they offer the point of religious offers moral guidance, and we see certain symbols, we attach a lot of to them, and that immediately makes us distant. Because we see people primarily as Muslim and not French. We on the side of the opposition we believe there's no inherent reason why you would not be able to be French and Muslim at the same time. And we do want to encourage that narrative that it's absolutely that possi possible. And we do believe that that's not facilitated by removing religious symbols and removing the possibility of being Muslim in the public space. That's not integration, that's hiding, and that's locking out of a part of an identity that's actually crucial to people. So first point, what's in the interest of leaders of certain faiths and the interests of minorities belonging to that faith? Like, let's say complication is. Okay, so leaders are representative of a certain faith. They gather to mass, they interpret text, and they, one of the main roles is to ensure that their followers and the members of congregation can get spiritual fulfillment. Yeah. In order to get spiritual fulfillment, you have to have the option to practice your religion fully. You can't just shut off your religion as soon as you go out into public spaces, because most of these majorities will spend a certain amount of time out in schools, whether we need certain dietary requirements, whether they might perhaps want to pray, whether they want to wear a wave, whether they want to wear a kippah, for example. They cannot simply shut this off and still get spiritual fulfillment. This would just be counteractive to the actual idea and the purpose of what the leader is there to encourage. It would be actually detrimental to these followers themselves <laughs> and the fact that they will not be able to practice their religion and get the full access of it in itself. We believe that's in the counter-interest of the minority religion, it's in the counter-interest of the actual leaders <laughs> to do that. What we also do believe, what's practically going to happen when you set out these policies? Bye. What? <laughs> we'll take closing. Yes. The reason why you cannot be French and Muslim at the same time is because no one from France is going to accept you as French person once you behave towards uh, against the concept they believe that it's right. I absolutely believe that you can be French and Muslim at the same time. I don't think that's a counteraction. The fact that some people are backlashing against it and haven't bought into that is not a legitimate reason to cancel out that option. You can still adhere to the idea of the French state, of French ideas, French history, and generally celebrate them and combine that with the religion of being Muslim. That's not a cause of the degree. Sense. But what do we think is actually going to happen when you encourage people to not go out? Okay, in status quo, we have moderates, we have extremists, both of them displaying their faith publicly. They both engage in public spaces and they're all out there. What we do believe though, when leaders start discouraging people from going out, 
Who is going to have the, the audacity, as I might say, but the nerve to actually challenge your leader, the one who's there for spiritual control and for guidance? We don't really think it's the moderates. They'll probably be able to follow in line. It will probably be the most radical ones that would have the nerve of doing this. What does this mean on two points? You'd get a representation that would be fairly unfair of what this religion stands for in a minority of what it means in the interaction that would happen in the public space. But also, these leaders would lose the already limited control they have over these radical elements within the minorities already. If you push them further away and push them out in the public space and let them be the single microphone and a single voice representing your issue and cause, we believe that's what's going to cause a backlash in the long run against the idea if you can be Muslim and French instead of interacting. What we do say though, if you do generally visualize religion in the public space, when you have moderates representing it, we believe generally if you feel welcome in the public space, if it certain belongs to you to a certain degree, people and moderates would be more out there. What happens in interaction in these public spaces? Of course, everybody's not going to come up and ask, why are you Muslim? Why are you wearing a kippah? Why are you wearing a wave? But in the sense that when you do, and when you do interact in that space with other people, you'd probably get a more moderate view of what this actually entails. The interaction would be more probable to happen because there'd be more people out there, and once you do interact, it's more probable that you get a moderate view and a moderate representation of what that religion consists of. What we heard a bit is like, oh, people were backlash in a Christian country, we use the Christian symbols, and we generally fear the unusual. We generally think that first, people don't backlash that much to the fact that people have minority symbols out there. I generally think that you get used to most symbols with time, as you can see many societies have been transitioning. But at least the majority will do that with time and get used to the fact that minorities are there. What on the other hand happens if you start discouraging them is that we actually um, do not encourage the idea of positive engagement, which we think is better. By doing that, they also by doing that, by banishing people, we'll have less engagement, but the engagement happen is radical and it pushes this backlash and further clashes. Prejudice is not static. Prejudice changes with time. Therefore, we're very happy to have encouraged and, uh, and uh, we're happy to have encouraged very fruitful and moderate interaction between majority and minority societies, which we believe that we will get if it could religious leaders encourage their members to go out and